recording now. All right, so let, I'm going to repeat again the four points because you know I didn't record this. There are four inputs I want to give you regarding the last assignment. Always print with explanatory component as part of the print statement. Okay, if it is you know volume is let's say um, you know so I'm going to open that file uh, just to you know make sure that I I say it exactly. Okay, what I want to speak, what I want to say. So, for example, uh, no, not A4. We are talking about A3. Okay, that is assignment three. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I'm taking and so yeah, here it is. <clears throat> I'm going to. I hope it's sharing. Let's see. I have to do the sharing here. One moment. It's coming. All right. So what I'm saying is uh, here, uh, let me put it up, okay. So what I'm saying is, you know, for example, you know, most of you did this, almost all of you did it, there is nothing wrong, it's okay. I would say it's okay, I didn't take any points here. Um, I, you really need to do print statement, don't just, you know, call like this, okay. Uh, because sometimes it may not work, and you know, there are certain conditions it won't work actually, okay. Um, so always use a print statement point one. I didn't take any points here if you haven't done it, uh, but I made that point you know, use the print statement. You know, uh, one of you actually tried to do this one and I thought it is cool. Okay, so almost close to this one. You didn't even do anything here outside of the print statement. Everything is within the print statement. I think it's cool. Okay, it, not always you can do it, but whenever you can, you can. There is no nothing wrong with that. Okay, and another person did like this. Uh, that is another way of you know print, using the print statement, but the main point here is that it is very expressive. I wanted to bring that attention to you. Okay, uh, the volume of a sphere with a radius of five, with a radius five, you know, not off. You know, I think with radius five is oh yikes, math is not defined. Okay, I already ran here. Okay, one one more moment. Input math. Okay. Uh, so it is very expressive. That's what I'm asking you to do in future. Okay, it's important for you and important for the reader. Um, you know, some have, you know, one person has did this way also. I thought it's all fine. Okay, this is fine, but just don't do this. Is the least of the expected, you know, uh, coding that I I was looking for. Uh, these are come, you know, some of the best codings. You know, at least this one volume is okay. Um, this is better than that. Second point I want to tell you is that, you know, um, unless you are being asked to give you so many, you know, 10, 15, 20 different decimal points, don't do that because there nobody, I mean, it's not, it's not elegant, okay? Just usually people do with two to four decimals. Two decimal is fine, up to four decimal is fine, okay? Uh, there are situations, you know, where you need a four decimal because, for example, if you are going to multiply this as a, you are going to make this as a percentage, you need four decimals, okay? Not here. But in, in, in your calculation, if you ever want to do it. Some of you did this, you know, um, uh, in a little bit complicated way. This is the simplest way you can do it. Very easy. Okay. Uh, some of you try to do that in a complex way, but you no, know, do this way. Um, and uh, most of you were uh, good, you know, most of you are good. I think one not, one probably one not, only one actually may, you know, had difficulty, but. Otherwise, you know, I, I have some, I have given this answer to you, you know, that in detail. All right, so uh, those are the input to, uh, to you about the assignment, okay? Now, you have this week, uh, what is that we are asking you to read through? Let me see, I'm gonna to go to this page, okay. So we are asking you to read through chapter five and chapter 10, all the way from 10.1 to 10.7 and 11, okay? So what do they mean? Chapter 10 means, five means, you know, Python modules. You already started using modules, okay? That is what the math is about, right? Import math is a module, module math is a module, okay? You already started doing that and random module is also commonly used. It's a, you know, random number generator for you. You know, this one simply means, you know, uh, uniform, uh, Uniform random number generator rand rand range is one to seven, which means you know don't include seven, but you know any number between one to six. So it can be some some kind of a 
uh, dye, right? Yeah, dye, D-I-E, dye has six phases. Okay, it's, uh, it is similar to that. So it's like rolling a die, basically, okay? Uh, so that is a random package. Within the random package, there are many functions, you know, many probability distributions. This is uniform probability distributions. If this is a uniform probability distribution. There are other things. Normal is there, chi-square is there, all kinds of things, okay? Um, so that package is also important. Two packages are introduced in five. Number 10 is all about, yes, I thought it's really, you know, very extensively, you know, talked about here. What is a list, you know, uh, various things here. You know, so maybe I can go through quickly um, what uh, different topics are. So it just defines a list is a very fundamental data structure. Okay, so here is a list. A list can actually have mixed type of data. You know, you know, what is the type of data? You know, string, integers, floats, uh, truth, truth value, none, all those things can be part of a list. Okay, it can be a mixed one. And it is within the square bracket. That is what distinguishes lists from tuples. Tuples are have tuples have left parenthesis, right parenthesis. Okay. And the, the big difference between lists and tuples is that lists are modifiable, mutable. Modifiable, mutable means changeable. That is modifiable, but tuples are not. Okay. But there is a trick to that to do, to that also. You can, you know, if you want to change a tuple, you have to take a copy of that. And you know, um, and then you know, um, yeah, replay, you know, and then change a the value in that copy if you want to change it. Okay, you construct a new tuple. Um, but anyway, the point, main point here is the list can be mixed of uh, mixed uh, data type, but uh, um, um, uh, the uh, besides lists, there are tuples. There are also uh, sets. Um, so tuples sets lists okay very commonly used um, and then the dictionary okay so these are all most common uh, data structures okay uh, dictionary is not uh, you know introduced to you yet but the meaning of dictionary should be very clear to you what do you, what do you have in dictionary you have a word and its meaning right attached to that a word and its meaning of course there are multiple meanings available but the, but the main point is that you no know, a word and a meaning which is what is called key and a value, key value paired, okay, collection of items in a dictionary. So those are four of the four things, but you know, in this chapter, we are only talking about lists. List can be, a list can be, a, you know, can have a list also. So for example, here, a yeah, mixed list, right? It has a mixed data type, and then the, it also has another small list inside, okay? Like that. Okay, so those are a little bit of definitions there. And then, you know, uh, some examples are here. I hope you are, you have read through all these things. And, you know, there is no question here, very basic items here. Uh, accessing the elements, you can slice the list, you can access a list, you know, a specific element, um, a member of element. For example, here, you know, we are talking about, you know, a, this is a list of lists, right? I mean, it has a list also here. This is zeroth element. The member starts with zero, okay? Zero, one, two, so um, zero, one, two, zero, one, two. So we are talking about, you know, from this list, you know, the second element, and then from this zero, one, two, cat. So it should be just cat here, isn't it? Let's check it out. What? Zero, a list. So here we are talking about a list, zero element, one element, two element. Zero, one, two. Is it? I'm surprised. Let's see. I'm surprised. I have to. I have to check it out now. What's going on? Oh, 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 oh. yes, yes, yes. Okay. So here the list says cat, right? But because it is a string, because it's a string, you can slice or access them each one of them separately. So that's why this will be C. Okay. Everybody gets it. <laughs> All right, so it's a string. You have to be very careful about you know, accessing strings. You know, so this is a second element, and then we are talking about the zeroth element of the can, which is C. Okay, so a list it can be a list of lists. A list can have lists, and then you can access an element, and then you can continue to access. You know, if it is a sub list, you can continue to slice again or find out the element. You can also slice. Okay, 
All right. So uh, here is a continued membership. You know, in this case, we are talking about in operator. Is this in in the list or not? So is this in this list? Yes. Okay. For example. Um, so uh, print 57 in list. Oh, this is very interesting. Print 57 in list. So what do you think is this one? 57 in list. So we are talking about true or false, right? So it should be 57 in list or not. Ah, it's not in list, so it's false. Everybody gets it? Talk to me a little bit. I have been, I just, I keep talking. Yes, I get it. Thank you. Okay, good. Um, all right. So, you know, if your lists are very fundamental, very important, um, and then of course you have other things also, like dictionary is also very fundamental. All these four data structures are fundamental. What are they? List. And that's the only thing that is being discussed in this chapter. You will have set. Uh, you, you have set. Set means the unique values only, unique things only in a list. Okay. It can have. Uh, it can be a tuple. It can be a list. Um, and if you want only unique things in that, then use set. Okay. If there is a problem about set later on. You'll see. In one of the videos. Professor, your screen is too small. Um... Okay. Okay. Can't see. If we are seeing, uh, if, if you can. I don't know. Okay, let me make it bigger. Oh, thank you for for the input. How about now? Can you see this better? Is it okay? Uh, it's a little better, but still very small. Still not good. Sorry about that. Okay, let me see whether I have to make it a big like this. The whole screen. Is it okay now? Yeah, much better now. Thank you. All right. Nice. Okay. So um, my point is, no. Um, in this in this week, we are only talking about lists, and lists has many many properties, and that's what we will see in the end. Uh, and what are they? Let me go back to the end to give you a collection of uh, uh, collection of prop uh, collection of methods that you can use. Okay. So, um, and here is an interesting example when, you know, when you are indexing from back, you know, you, when you are indexing minus, you are indexing from, uh, from back. You know, in other words, this is the front part of the list and this is the back, you know, the end part of the list. So you're talking about indexing from the end, right? So I think you can see that, uh, print fruit, fruit equal to fruit minus one is, let me run this. So this is uh, what is called, you know, uh, replacement, right? The assignment. You can't do this for uh, uh, for the tuple, but you know, you are assigning new values. You know, you got a list here, and then you are assigning new values. In this case, you are saying zeroth value replaced by pair. That's why you know when I run it after the changes here, you get here pair. Not only that, there is also another assignment here, minus one. You no, know, so minus one refers to this one, while zero refers to this one, minus one refers to this one. Okay, I said you no, know, coming from from the end end part of it. All right. So what we are saying is you now replace, you know, replace that position with orange. So that's why when you print the new list, fruit list, you are getting this. Okay. Um, what else? So here is the slicing that I talked about. He says you have a list here. You can slice it. Now that means you are picking up only element from one to three. So zero is here. Uh, no, but in this case you are going to replace one to three. Zero is here. One is here. Two is here. Three is here. Four is here. Five is here. And then we are saying one, two, three. These three things are going to be replaced by x, y. So if you run, you get a a x, y, d, e, f. Okay. What's going on? Oh. The three. Oh, you remember that the last point is not included. Remember, that's the reason why you don't have you, you still keep this one three. This is zero, one, two, three. But when you're talking about the you know slicing, uh, subsetting the list members, you are talking about starting point is included, but not the end point. Okay. okay and uh, so in this case, we are saying, you know, just uh, empty there is no nothing you are going to replace one uh, to one and two in this case zero one and two so you should get a 
B, E, F. And that's what you see here. Um, so these are all, you know, assignments. So remember, because of this equal to, if you just ask for it, it's different, okay? Just ask for one, one colon one, which means only one. Um, B, print, A list. So let's, let's just run this one. A list is this, A, D, F, okay? And we are saying one to one. Uh, this is an interesting situation, right? So we are saying zero, one position. And because of equal to, we are assigning it. And let's run this one, A list. And we have uh, up to this, the first time we have B and C included at one colon one. A, B, C, D, E, D, F. This is B, D, F. This is one. So we are introducing at the position one, we are introducing, this is very interesting, right? Because when we say one to one, you know, one is not included, one is included. Um, no, nonetheless, it means here, you have original A here, that is zeroth position, and then one, you know, the one is included here. A list, we are talking about working with the same list, A list, and then DF, DF. In the second case, four and four and four to four, the, the, after you included this, because you know, A list is now accomplished, right? And then with the new A list, whatever you have here, you are working with that position statement four to four is E. So zero, one, two, three, four. In this position, you are introducing E. But this is a very interesting situation. Remember that, hmm? uh, which is very unique, which is very unique. Um, if you were to just put A list subset one and do it, would it also work? Uh, that's a good question. And I, I would say, yeah. But, oh, this is very interesting. So it is doing it, but now that position A1, okay, is this one, right? Zero, one. And that is replaced with a, you know, full, uh, with a replace with a list. Okay. 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 Um, that's interesting, yes. Let me go back and rerun it again and then redo this. So when you have very clearly, you know, well, you know, specified uh, element position, then we are replacing assignment because of an assignment here. We are replacing this with this one, okay? And that's what is happening. And given whatever you got here, you are working with this next statement. So if you do the same thing, it won't be a problem because it's only one element. Uh, but, uh, that is an interesting thing. It's one element, okay? So why would I can wait? A list, error index, list index uh, out of range. Oh, okay, yeah, of course. Because you have here maybe three. And you, when you have this, it's, you know, index is reduced by one, okay? Okay, three is E. Oh, it's still not, not valid because you have zero, one. This whole thing is one, okay? Two, so at best I can do two. At best I can do two. And you know the F is replaced by a list type um, representation. Okay. So the the important thing I I know I want to get your attention is you know, the meaning of this very little bit unusual, mm -hmm. which is different from what you have as one to one. Because we said that you know the endpoints are not included when in a list, right? In a slicing. Because of that. So let me go back to that. Whatever happened there. This is a little bit unusual example and retain this in your memory. Okay. Um, check your understanding. So what is printed by the following? Just a quiz, quick quiz, right? The L list is this. L list two. The second member of this one, zero, one, two, is replaced by or is replaced by true. Okay. Print a list. Four, two, true, six button. Four, two, true. We are replacing that. Okay. There are a lot of interesting properties about lists because uh, uh, you know, that's a, one of the fundamental way of uh, defining data data values. 
it could be strings it could be uh, integers floats um, and you know i want to go to that list of uh, properties that i want to share with you uh, let me see this is aliasing that's fine so i i want to get your attention here this is uh, a is a is b not same as a equal to b again when you have two lists a is same as a, a is B is not same as A equal to equal to B because of the internal representation of the list. Okay, how the object is stored is referred, you know, uh, the, how the object is stored inside the, you know, inside the computer in registers is matters also. So because of that, uh, if you have here, let's uh, let me go back. Okay, here. A is this. B is this and B, B, B is equal to A, exactly same as this. But yet, you know, very interestingly, you will see if I put A equal to equal to, which will be a different case. Let's say print A equal to equal to B. This is an absolute equality. Absolute equality means even at the register level, it is equal. But this doesn't mean at register level, it is equal. Okay. So if I do this, uh, you know because of the copy issue here okay so let's let me redo this way 81 82 83 okay so what do you think is going to happen there are two different named lists but two same list but differently named list okay same list different name this is what i am telling you is going to differentiate these two a is b versus a is equal to equal to b so this is, you know, refers to whether the elements are same, but this refers more than the elements at the register at the register level. Not only elements, but at the register level, is it same? No, it says no. So this is another interesting uh, property of the list. Okay, um, you know, under the under the concept called aliasing, you know, give a, you are giving a different name. You know, if you do the alias B, if A is equal to B, it's a different name. Let's say uh, C. B is equal to C. Now it is. Let's say print A. No, C is D. So this is a, this is a different version of the you know representation of the list versus actually just you are comparing the list here when you do this so there it's not true i just want to get this kind of you know this attention also you know, get your attention to this uh i want to go to this uh, the list of uh, prop list properties there are quite a bit of list properties here cloning list that's fine you can read that uh, there is a a lot of lists well oh, well list properties are available i'm going to give you list methods yeah this is what i want to get your attention you can see that in this case there are many of them are here append insert pop pop refers to remove okay remove the uh, you know you can remove a specific indexed element or the last one okay if you don't give a specific indexed element indexed, uh, indexed element it is always the last one okay um sort reverse index count and remove so here are some of the examples so i have an you know, empty list right now and then i'm appending i can keep appending uh, values or even you know anything i want i can because list can contain a mixed uh, data types i can do anything i can append keep appending the you know types different data data values types or strings uh, so I'm appending first five and then I'm adding 27 to it. So that means 27 becomes the second element in this list. And then I'm adding, appending, not adding, appending three. That means this is the third element, which is the, the index is two. This is the fourth element, the index is three. If you print, you know, you'll get all those things, okay? So I will come to that. Uh, here, I can insert in the position, you know, one, I'm inserting, okay? um and then print my list and then this one is you know how many how many 12 numbers are there that's what it is the count refers to how many of them are there like this 
and then this is the you know specific, specifically getting the uh, indexed position three in the list my list indexed position three and then this is how many times the five is there reversing once you reverse it is the reversed values are very interesting the reverse values are already part of it so you don't have to you know you, know, you don't have to assign a, assign a new name to it okay the reverse is already part of it if you print then the my list will be completely reversed we'll see that the same way sort is also okay uh, whatever is here it will sort um, you know it's a uh, um, and and then stored here but whatever the original my list had it will start sort and then store it in the same list you know, we'll, we'll see that and then remove the um, remove this five indexed index no not index you know it's, so it's remove five last item is you know the pop item when i said pop if you don't say any index it is always going to take the last item that's what we are storing here print last item and then finally after you pop you want to see what the list is let's run this and see okay some of these properties of list so here is you know you know empty list is appended 5 27 3 12 so that's what you get here first print statement okay and then i'm inserting in position one i'm inserting the value 12 so position one that means after this that is 12. Professor? yes um if you if you use the remove operation and there's more than one element uh that's five will it remove all the elements no it will it will it will eliminate let's run this you know maybe i should add a five it should eliminate the first occurrence um i will do one thing let's add after 27 let's add uh, my list and then we'll come back and see what, what happens here run this so before i go let me finish this one okay one, one run and then we'll run this again and we'll interpret this so my my list dot insert i know i kind of inserted 12 here and then print my list so after that i second print right this is the second print and then i want to know how many of the uh how many of the tolls are there right that's why there are two tolls are there right so it counted that and it did that and then index three what is the value of uh, uh, my list index three so this is what i have right now right this is what i have one so value of index no we, we want to know uh, the index of three the value three index of value three zero one two three i mean obviously it's not a big deal right um because what happened here is and I, I don't want to miss the line numbers here print is this one first one the second one is this print third one is this that is the two of them are there uh, index is this that's what this one three is so it's kind of a little bit confusing right so maybe i should change the position of this one so now that i got changed to add two of them this is going to change this will change the next run okay remember that this is going to change the next run are you with me or am i running fast okay i'm with you okay cool then i am taking the uh, count how many times the fives are there only once is there and then reverse so my list dot reverse print my list so whatever i have here i you know i reverse that one so that's why i get this one and then sort you know you know it is the the default is always increasing okay it's three five it's sorted this one and it's keeping everything within the same I, I, the same list name that is my list Okay, that's important and then remove five so so we want to see what happens to this new remove five in the next one because i have two of them and then print my list again after remove five this is what has happened i popped out 27 that's what this one is and then remaining is what about i have here so let's run this one now there you go okay so here you can see that it removed only the first item okay so you see this one we were talking about this so I added two times five because we want to see what happens when we remove uh, the remove where is the remove here is insert reverse remove here though on this one after this what happens that's why you know I want to add it tw twice so that answers your question anything else that are uh, reverse I think we have everything included in our there's, in our there's little a question in the here. chat as well one moment all right 
Yeah. Rupa, when you pop a number, does it reorder the index dynamically? Uh, remember, yes, of course. But when you when you do a pop, oh, you are talking about a specific position, right? Uh, yeah. When you do a specific position, then it will reorder that the indices exactly. Uh, or does it introduce a null character? No, no, no. It's, it will reorder the index. All right. Okay, so some in you know interesting properties, and you know we are just in the early you know stage of various data structures. Okay, so and the lists are the starting point. You know later on you will see uh, tuples is introduced here. I don't want you to get confused with this one. You, know, you can skip this. Don't worry about it. Uh, I probably we asked you to skip you know, 10.7 only. Oh, he said only 10.7. I I talked about enough quite a bit. Okay, but it's all important. Okay. Um, the, there is a introduction here somewhere at the end. List and for list uh, using lists as parameters. But anyway, they say so the reading material says you only up to 10.7. Okay, fine. Then comes 11, chapter 11. Chapter 11 is about uh, files. Oh, that's what you are reading for. Uh, for doing your assignment. Okay. You are reading for your assignment. So let me go to assignment. Do you have any questions so far? I want to go to the assignment and talk to you about Python 4 assignment. Okay. Everybody with me? Maybe something you were typed. No. Okay. Yeah, I'm with you. Okay, cool. Now somebody asked me, are strings always, are strings, uh, Elizabeth is asking, what if there is more than one string? Uh, more than one string, you can have more than one string within a list, of course you can have, but uh, I'm not sure what you're asking. Are strings always C? What does this mean, C? Why is that you ask that question? I'm trying to understand what is meant by C. Uh, can you? Can you explain, please? We talked about all strings always C in the chat area. Elizabeth. Uh, okay, uh, you know, I'll find out. Okay, here it is. In the example you were looking at, where it was coming up wrong, you selected. Oh, let me go back. No, the reason that I, I didn't think about that, you know, it's just a string issue. If it is a string issue, you know, you have to, you remember, yeah, I think the set two, select the second element and then within square parenthesis zero, right? And that occurs as zero, as uh, zero has a meaning there, basically because it's not the entire thing. It is because it's a string, Strings are again uh, sliceable. That's why it comes as C. And you said strings are different to work with. Yes. Uh, am I making sense now? A little bit. Okay, let's talk about it. A little bit more. I'm saying initially, um, I was just quickly selecting it as, oh, it's two, okay? And the two means the entire string, no. Because the second part of that selection is zeroth element of that two. Okay, the answer was something like this. I remember two, and then after that, like this. Are you with me? The list name, the my list maybe, whatever list, list one, let's say list one. Whatever the second element was, and the second element was cat. And I'm saying because it is a string, yes, you have to, and strings can be sliceable. Within that, uh, in a list, if you're selecting a string as an element, that is also sliceable. And that's exactly what this one turned out to be. And hence it is equal to C. The word, because the, the string, the entire string was cat. Yeah, it's the first letter. Uh, because it is sliceable, a string is sliceable, talks about the first letter, which is C. Got it, okay, cool. Uh, it's a very important uh, point that we talk. What we talked about, the uh, strings behave differently. Okay, that that's my point. Uh, 
All right, anything else? Okay, cool. All right, so for your, uh, this week, the assignment is as follows, right? You have to read this file, pitchingstats.txt, and it's given to you in the assignment section, okay? So if I go to, uh, go to assignment three, uh, no, assignment, not three, assignment four, <coughs> I will have to talk to you about uh, the the project also. I'll do that at the end. So this is the assignment. You have to download this, and then you have to download this also. Make sure that you know both are in the same folder. Okay. Otherwise, you have to use the path when you are reading the file. So let me go here. <clears throat> so this file you can just check it out. It's a text file. You can open it and see what it is and so on. So. If you look at my file, I'm going to show, I can't talk to you. So I'm just basically saying, okay, open with Notepad. Oh, Notepad is not a good idea. I will do something else. Uh, I can use TextPad or WordPad. TextPad, you know, that's another one. You know, let's say WordPad. It it works better, right? Because it separates the lines. Okay, it separates the lines. So those are the lines we are talking about in this assignment. Okay, these are the lines. Now, what we are saying is. When you're reading a file, because you're going to read the file, get the data through your file, not through inputting yourself. So far, that's what you have been doing. Okay. But for the first time, you are going to uh, read the data from your file and work with the data. That's our purpose in this assignment. So you open, a, you know, there's something called open, open a file name within quotes file name, and then you say it's reading, or it could be W, which means writing. Okay, or you can read and write also. Okay, so R and W, but in this case, we are only reading. Mm -hmm. So that's what this, uh, this, uh, what happened when I wanted to go back to that. Uh, is this the one? No, not this, not this. Uh, in your interactive Python, we are talking about, you know, if you go through that interactive Python, you will see. Uh, let me go back. I don't want to miss this. Okay, interactive Python. Uh, interactive Python. You will see there are different options here. You can see that. Okay, but right now we are only going, only going to read the data from this file. So you give an object name, file name, for what you are doing as an activity here. That is open and read. That's an activity, and that is named as file name. That's an object. So it has some properties. Okay. Now what are the properties? Before you go to the properties. You know, this will not work if this file is not in your default default uh, directory. For me, the default directory is this place. I'm going to share it with you. So for me, my unless I go and you know, remember, I, when I open the Jupyter file, it's going to be something like this. It's going to be something like this. This is my default directory. Okay, but I am going to work with my specific you know week module so uh, for this course 430 and it is springtime spring uh, spring for, you know 2019 folder and we are talking about the a, you know a4 assignment 4 this is where i have stored my assignment uh, you know python assignment 4 and the pitching stats text also okay so you have to make sure that you know wherever you have your assignment you have, you have the data set, data file also okay now let me go back to this so if you don't have it, it's going to give me an error, right? No such file or directory. Mm -hmm. So what we are saying is, you know, complete this one. That is, you are going to read the file while true. The, basically, you already, you know, you already, we have already given you the file name. You know, this is your object. Okay, you can do that. Or maybe, uh, oh, okay. So we are giving you actually some lot of, you know, reading material for you to learn. Okay. Your reading material is here, so don't worry. This is where your starts your program. Program two, problem two is starting here. So let me go back to the problem one. Yes, you want to read the file first. We want to show that you can read the file. Okay. Problem one is just read this file. Okay. But this file you can read. I mean, I keep telling this you know few times that this file can be read only if it is in the file where your program file is. Your program file is module four. Python assignment, right? Wherever that is, that's where this data set, the, the file name should also be there. The data file should also be there. Okay. Then only it will read. Otherwise, you have to use a path. You now you have to introduce a path here. What are the path was? Path is, right? So let me say uh, my path here is. Um, so this, let's say, this is my path, right? I can use actually uh, that way also. 
Mm. So this is documents. This is, I think, users, not users. So it's users, Google Drive, users, USSS, Google Drive, MSDS, 430, SP2019, EA4. I can give the full path also. That's my point. Okay, You can do that way also. Or you keep the file wherever your this assignment file is. Okay, then you won't have any problem. You know, you, you know, you, you file will be read. Now, in the second part of it, basically, so after you read the file, you can work, you know, check this out. But these checks are all already given to you. The line is supposed to be this. Okay, it's not coming from that file. It's just given for you to understand how this line is split by what and all those things. And how do you access the first element, fourth element? And you know the last element. The one way to access the last element is minus one. Mm -hmm. You don't need to know what its position. You just say this. Now, uh, given that you know we are now uh, asking you to do another variation of that. So this is the file. Read open this file. Read as a is uh, a reading file. BB is BB file is an object that has read this file. And for every line in BB file you know, uh, you're going to do some work in here, okay? Whatever it is in BB file, do some work and then close the file. You always should close the file. If you don't do anything, it is just going to print like this, okay? If you don't do anything for every line, you know, uh, print the sentence, print line, okay. Um, and then we are asking you, so here is, you know, what is this? Yeah, <laughs> it is. here's the file, read lines, and I'm printing it. If you don't do certain, you know, in a very specific way, if you don't do it in a very specific way, this is how, this is how you'll get the file, okay? The whole thing has a list. Every line is part of a big list. This is line one, backslash M, that means new line, okay? And then this line two, this backslash M, it's a whole, it's a list, it's read as a list. And then you can also do various things. You can append a name. You remember we talked about append, draw, I mean, remove, append, you know, all those things you can apply here, pop, uh, you know, specific index positioned, um element which could, be, which could itself be a list and all those activities are happening here as an example again for learning purposes now for line in lines you know you are asked being being asked to do some activities here hmm? uh, in this case it's really you know we want you to do uh find out the maximum games one okay for a particular person you know? what is the maximum games one so uh, that's a kind of activity here. So you remember you have to use something called IDX. That is a location, ID versus IDX. There are two things that you can use for, uh, for a list, okay? ID versus IDX, learn the difference between ID and IDX, okay, um, for a list. And then basically do some calculations and then print. Hmm? There is a difference between Windows and, you know, the command that you have to use in case you want to check the output file. There is a difference between whether it is Windows or a Apple. Uh, so accordingly, you know, you'll have to use, for mine is a Windows. So for me, because it's Windows, I just have to say, you know, this is the command that I'm going to use. You know, this means the magic kind of, you know, it's, it's a command, you know, the OS command. So it just types out. In your case, it won't be, if it is not Windows, you're going to do cat, which is basically means Unix command. All right, that's about your assignment for this week. Okay, any questions about the assignment? Because I also want to hear out your project. Talk to you a little bit again this week about your project and hear out what you have, you know, as questions. Any questions asked so far? Let me see whether you have typed anything in the chat area. I've tried numerous codes for problem three and four from the, okay, I'll come one at a time, please, okay. Uh, Elizabeth says, if anyone has issues with it not running, sometimes it helps to save and reload the kernel. It happened to me a couple of times. Not running, okay. Um, sometimes it helps to save and reload the file, reload the kernel. Yeah, I, I don't know why, you know, it can happen. Um, it may take some, you know, sometimes it may take more, more than what I put the time is. But just to you know, it's a good idea what you say, uh, Elizabeth, thank you. Yes, it has happened to me several times also. I have tried using numerous codes. Uh, Alex says, I have tried using numerous codes for problem three and four. Okay, what is problem three and four? 
three years. Uh, oh, okay. So this is what it is, right? You know, problem two list games one. It should then iterate about lines list, splitting each line, each line in return, in turn, and then obtaining both the num name of the picture and corresponding one. Okay, adding the values to the corresponding list. Okay. Uh, so here, actually, we have given you a little bit of code here. Let's see what it is. So names is you know it's a list, and then we are just empty list we are defining, and we are going to store the uh, the names and the games one two separate lists. So um, you have to do some command here that will give you names will be stored there. So names are coming. Remember the first column. First column is what zero zeroth value, right? Remember that here list zero gives you the names LST zero the zeroth value. LST is your line split. LST is your line split. You have taken the line and you split that one. And then whatever is coming is zeroth value, that is this one, is the name. Hmm? And then what is the number of games is where the number of games is coming. Let me go back here. So name, here is the here is the various uh, you know column names, right? Name, team name, games one, games lost, ERA, games pitch, innings pitch. Okay. So what is that we are talking? Games one, games lost, team name. Okay, now what is that we want? Uh, here, um, here, name, oh, my list names. Okay, uh, we want to take one moment. Three. Okay, games one. So games one is what is that? Games one position. Games one is. Zero name is zero one two that is two if, you know if you use the LST you know that's what is you know we use you know LST is your line split this is your zero one two this is games one right zero one two games one zero is name two is you know games one okay so that's what we are talking about in this list we are going to store that right so um, and you know whatever the, the command you have here that, that is what it should pick up you know the zeroth position of the line right of whatever the line is split into multiple multiple elements and creates a list right and out of that you are going to pick up the first position as name second position index two as zero index zero is name index two is your games one are you with me alex And if you print it, it is what it's going to come out to be. Are you with me? Let me see whether you have an answer. Oh. Oh, no answer. Okay. Either get no result or same line prints every single line. Same line. No, if it is a loop, what do, you, what do I mean by a loop here? See, for line in lines, and where are the, where are the lines are coming from? See, lines are bb file dot read lines. So when you do that, you know it is it has created all the lines as a list. That's what initially happens. Okay, so that's why we print it and see. When you do this, bb file is this, and then bb file dot read lines, then you got all the lines here as a list. And then you are processing your list. Does it make sense now? No, I um I if I try um exactly the code there, I am um, I get that printout um probably like eleven times. This one. No, if you scroll up. Hmm. Scroll up on the homework up more. More oh. over the line, yeah, yeah, like the first one. Hmm. The um, this one, yeah. Mm -hmm. Try and this, this is just processing one line. This is just processing only one line. We have read this is nothing to do with the after the file is written. It's, a, it's an example of okay. how to process a line. This is uh, only one line. Uh, line. I actually you, added in the code um above. You know the four line in uh, the file name. I just added it to the top of that, and then it printed all of them. I guess 
We're not supposed to do that. Okay. No, no, no. Anyways, no, no, I'm sorry. No, no. Yeah, you got it. You <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> you okay. Uh, All right, you know, that is, see, the uh, sometimes the, the, this confusion comes, I have seen it from, for some people, that is, we try to give you some, you know, some understanding material. How do you think through? Okay. That's what these ideas are all, you know, one at a time. Only one line you take, how do you process a line? That's what this is all about. And then, you know, you combine all these things to do your assignment. That's what, you know, it comes down, your assignment two and three. Okay. So, um, so process separately each of these and then close your ideas because you understood. Now you do your problem. Now think in that way, you will be fine. So Alex, I hope it's clear to you. Um, yeah, otherwise, you know, um, I have to spend some time one-on-one -on -one with you later on, okay? Um, all right, so any other question here? If no questions here, then we can talk about the project. Hmm? You can ask questions, that's okay. You know, while we talk about the project also, you can ask questions. Uh, anything else on hey, this hi, thing? Hi, Professor, this is, uh, this is Peter. Um, oh. If I may ask a question uh, on the very last part, the very last question and the very last part, um, yeah. it asks to um, append the string to count number of pictures in the file. Um, so, uh, uh, yep, right there on the last part. Oh, here, here, here. Yes, and then uh, in the in the code on the very, very last to do, it says open file for appending and then construct a string. Um, mm. uh, can you uh, can you give us some just some hints or guidance on how to do the count, like how? Okay. Yeah. I'll... So, okay, repeat problem two, but instead of printing the output a Jupyter notebook cells, write the output line by line to a file with file name output.txt. That's all we are doing, okay? Yes. So we're going to write it as the output.txt file. Yep. And so, yep. I also add the count, the number of lines in the file. Also add, add code to the count, the number of files. Finally, open the file once again, this time to append the string specifying the number of pictures in the file. So the last line should be like this. Yes. Basically. And uh, is this file, the answer is already given to you. So the answer, yes, let me yes. see. How. Yeah, three, six, nine, there are only okay. 10 lines, right? That's yep. what it is. So, so you are going to use a counter to count separately. That's one thing it is, the program needs to do, okay? The counter, yes. there must be a counter here, okay? Which will count how many, every time when the line is counted, line plus one. You know, whatever, it, you know, you can okay. say the num pictures, num underscore pictures is equal to, no, not a num pictures plus equal to one, right? Uh, okay, okay, got so it. That, so keep counting. that is what your 10 is going to be. Okay. Okay, and uh, so everything else is here, you no, know, otherwise for line in lines, you do this, you know, you are going to calculate this, whatever, not even a calculate, it's already there. You are going to print only the name, yep. name the team name, and it's ERA, okay? Okay. So ERA is given to you. Do you have to calculate that? I think I remember in a different version, we have to calculate that. No, it's already there, you know? Okay, so just uh, add a counter. Okay, yes. got it. Yes, yes, yes. I'll try that. That's cool. Thank uh, you. Anything else? So, how is uh, the project going along? Or coming along, <laughs> you know, whatever. How is it coming along, project? Let me go back to the when is that you are submit. You know, you are submit, it's coming up. Go gains one moment. Assignments, you know, modules. I will look into the modules. Uh, modules. So three, four, five. Yeah, next week, you know, not this week. So this week is ends in 28th, right? Sunday is 28th. The following week, you are going to submit your milestone one. So how is it coming along? Any questions you have there? Are you able to locate the data set? That's your first question, right? What matters to you? What interests you? Of course, you know, you may not have a data set that interests you. So you have to work with the data set that you have. You can get, right? Where is that? Again, I'm going to blast it. Mm, so one moment, please. What happened to that? Okay, here I am. Oh. And you choose the data set from, oh, definitely, Elizabeth. I, I, I really appreciate that if you do that because 
make most of your work, right? Why not? That that is the uh, that excites me actually. I always tell all my project people, you know, just bring your work, you know, use it in the class. When looking through the data, Jody says, uh, when looking through the data sets that have three fields, some have ten. What is this? Three fields. I'm not sure we can do interesting work with it. Oh, oh, yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. I understand you are you are talking about the project data sets, right? Uh, you are talking about project data sets. Yeah, I agree with you. I think you are, you are right. So, you know, uh, there are a lot of data sets more than three. I don't know. You, know, you might have seen one one or two data sets or maybe a few of them, but usually you get a lot of uh, lot of data sets with the the references I gave. What's the you know reasonable number? Something like above seven. You know, I would say, but three is too too less. Uh, thank you very much for asking the question. Please go for a data set at least seven variables. You know, even that may not be practical unless it is a designed experiment, which is what statisticians do. Okay, but we are in the world of more and more big data, so be bold, take a large data set. That's okay. Even if it's a million observation, you shouldn't be worried about it now. You know, you have the talent to read the file. It will process one line after another line, one line after another line, if, even if it's a million, million observation. Okay, but it's somewhat unwieldy, but you can do it. Okay, thanks for that question. Uh, Elizabeth says someone asked me to do the EDA. Oh, absolutely. But uh, uh, I hope you know you know what is meant by EDA. You know, I don't know your background right now. What have you taken the 410, 411, all those courses? At least you have to be there, you know, to do reasonable EDA work. Are you with me on that? Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Um, so, any other question about it? This, this are really good, cool, good, good questions. Please uh, do ask me about it. Uh, you know, you you need to do. You know, you need to be providing some interesting data set that interests you. Basically, not not me. Whatever interests you, I'm I'm good to work with that. Um, I want to know how you are looking at it, why you are looking at it. Those are things you are going to write in your proposal. And that is basically a proposal milestone, right? Milestone is about proposal. Good. Anything anything else? That's those are all good questions. Clarifications. It's quiet. Uh, <laughs> they have to, have to say by name. You are fine, right? Everybody. Uh, Peter Brown. I'm going from down you know, at the bottom of the list. Is Peter Brown, Mr. Brown, Ray, Ray, yeah. Reta. I'm, sorry. I'm good. Thank you. Yeah, good. You're welcome. Uh, Make on. Joseph, Jody, Jonah, Elizabeth, Calvin, Arupa, like Alex. Any any questions about the uh, project? Okay. No concern. Uh, you know, you can always send a message. Um, uh, that's all I have for today. It's getting very interesting because of the data types you started reading now lists you know you'll pretty soon read about uh, tuples dictionary and sets those are four broadly speaking four different data types and a sets is basically a unique value unique members you know in a list okay so really three you know basically that we are talking about you know dictionary list and tuples and even tuples is okay, you know. List, lists and dictionary are probably the most fundamental. Okay, from there you can derive all those things. One important thing that you always want to know is that you no, know, how do we convert from one data type to another data structure to another data structure? If it is a list, how do you get this set? How do you get you know the tuple? And you know how do you you know given a dictionary? How do you get you know? Only the keys alone or the values alone, and so on. Okay, can you bring an outsider? Absolutely, yes, Jana. Uh, but have a good reason why you want to work with that because, um, you know, you, I don't want you to overcommit to anybody. You know, even in your office, you know, I kind of mentioned to Elizabeth, 
that you know unless you know what is meant by EDA you know <laughs> have you done Elizabeth have you done any course on 410 and 411 please uh, mention your answer 410 or 411 which is uh, regression and classification time series and oh okay then you know what is EDA okay good that's fine um not time series but that's okay you know but multivariate analysis maybe what is that is it 412 Mm. Okay, so if you know regression, uh, classification, and multivariate, then I think definitely you know you are good to go with EDA. Uh, so no, no, you know I'm I'm talking to Elizabeth Jody. Okay, she is interested in doing EDA, exploratory data analysis. So for that, I was asking you know uh, whether you have done certain courses because you need them. Um, oh, this is my years. second to last law. Oh, you know quite a bit. Okay, so you are good. Yes, thank you. Uh, second to last class, okay. So you haven't, you are still to go for 498. Yeah, okay. It would be, it would have been nice to be the first. You mean Python, nice to be the first one? Maybe, yeah. Because, you know, the Python has become popular only recently. I mean, it, we, we introduced that only three, three terms back, we introduced this course, you know, because there is a lot of demand for this. We introduce that and it's becoming very popular um okay um mine too oh uh, yours arupa yours is uh, first time you are doing uh, this is your first course in, in the program msds program is that right is that what you're saying my uh, first course all right uh, thank you very much everyone um that's all i have for tonight uh, have fun time learning Python. Um, it's a very important tool. I, I keep saying this because uh, when I was doing my graduate study, Python was not there actually, you know, way back. So R was R was also R was in the early stages. It used to be called S S plus, and then they made it uh, uh, open source. What is S S plus? They made it open source. That's what is R is. Okay. So yes, we had, but uh, it was not that. Um, I would say it was not that ready, you know. So I used to use, I used to use other programming languages. There are other things in econometrics and so on. That's what I used to use. Anyway, Python is wonderful. It's, it gives you a lot of power to automate things. Go ahead, have fun time. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, Alex, you know, if you need to, you know, please work on the ideas that, you know, this, this workbook contains enough information for everybody to try in a very careful way. If you still have a problem, I'll work with you, okay, on a, on a separate session. Maybe on a Saturday, half an hour, I'll spend time with you. Try until then, okay? All right, everyone, thanks a lot. Have a good night. Bye-bye.